Next system is called Deep Longitudinal Line. DLL in short. Deep Longitudinal Line consists of biceps femoris or biceps femoris in Latin. Sacrotibrous ligament on the same side. Erector spinae muscle group, ESP in short. And gluteus maximus on the same side. As well as latissimus dorsi on the opposite side. This is Dorsey on the opposite side. Let's take a look at this one more time. The longitudinal line consists of biceps femoris, ipsilateral gluteus maximus, ipsilateral meaning on the same side, underlying sacrotuberous ligament which connects sacrum with the uh, ischial tuberosity. That's what the name says basically, sacrotuberous ligament ipsilateral erector spinae group, iliocostalis, longissimus and spinalis subdivisions, as well as uh, contralateral latissimus dorsi. During hip extension phase, deep longitudinal line system will have a tendency to overcompensate for weak posterior oblique system. In previous lesson, we looked at posterior oblique system, P O S. Deep longitudinal line will overcompensate for its weakness. Posterior oblique system consists of latissimus dorsi, thoracolumbar fascia, and contralateral gluteus maximus. As we can see that there is not a whole of a lot of difference between posterior oblique system and deep longitudinal line. Deep longitudinal line consists of biceps femoris, sacrotuberous ligament, erector spinae muscle group, gluteus maximus, as well opposing sides latissimus dorsi, contralateral if we take away biceps femoris, sacrotuberous ligament and erector spinae muscle group, we are basically left with posterior oblique system, gluteus maximus, latissimus dorsi and thoracolumbar fascia in between. These are huge structures, latissimus dorsi and gluteus maximus are two, two of the biggest muscles in our body. At the same time, they have a tendency to underperform. If for some reason gluteus maximus is not firing properly, our body will compensate with biceps femoris. This will cause pelvis to tilt posteriorly, ipsilateral pelvic posterior tilt. Let's change the view. So let's say if this side's gluteus maximus is underperforming, if this side's gluteus maximus is weak, pelvis is going to tilt backwards on this side. And usually opposing side's pelvis is going to tilt towards the front. So often we will see posterior pelvic tilt on ipsilateral side and anterior pelvic tilt on contralateral side. If gluteus maximus is underperforming and hamstrings are taking over, in a squatting motion, let's say uh, sitting on a chair, acetabular femoral joint or hip joint will have a tendency to rotate externally. So external femoral rotation. If femur is rotating externally, tibia 
is gonna rotate internally optimally during a squat we should observe exactly the opposite optimally femur should rotate inwards and tibia tibial bone should rotate externally if biceps femoris or so to say lateral hamstrings if they are overcompensating for weak gluteal muscles that can lead to knee pain and anterior hip pain another problem with this system is overactive erector spinae muscles especially at the lumbar region which is gonna inhibit anterior oblique and posterior oblique systems specifically internal abdominal obliques with weak gluteals with weak gluteals of the posterior oblique system and weak abdominal obliques of the uh, anterior oblique system we will observe tight erector spinae muscle group especially at the lumbar region and tight deep hip flexor muscles from the front so iliopsoas is going to be tight 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 there is a name for this situation lower cross syndrome deep longitudinal line plays essential role here with weak posterior oblique system gluteus maximus is going to be inhibited and biceps femoris is taking over erector spinae muscle group is going to take over as well uh, as a result we will see increased lordotic curve as a result we'll we'll see posteriorly tilted pelvis and underperforming gluteals are going to be compensated by overactive hamstrings with with overactive deep longitudinal line system we can observe anterior hip pain knee pain plantar fasciitis because because of the fascial connection of biceps femoris to plantar fascia as well we can observe hyperlordotic curve and since we are not 100% symmetrical usually one side's oblique systems are going to be stronger than the other side's oblique systems especially we can observe that with let's say tennis players high performance athletes uh, baseball players javelers that being said with overactive deep longitudinal line we will observe SI joint dysfunction on the same side as well one side's pelvis is going to tilt towards the back other side's pelvis is going to tilt towards the front so let's say if hamstrings are tight on right side right side that, that would be the left side then if hamstrings are tight on this side here that will cause this side's hip rotate towards the back other sides hip usually will tilt towards the front and because of this shearing force uh, there is going to be misalignment in sacroiliac joints bilaterally and usually one side is going to be the more, the more painful side so we can see that deep longitudinal line primarily serves compensation function